Have you ever wondered about the inner workings of a train's braking system? Have you ever seen a train disc brake system? Or do you understand how trains come to a stop? If train brake systems are a mystery to you, don't worry. In this video, we will demonstrate the components of a train brake system, including the disc brake, and explain how the entire train braking system works. A train consists of many coaches, and they are all pulled by the engine. Normally, the train brake system operates using a compressed air brake system. Compressed air is a form of stored energy created by compressing regular atmospheric air to higher pressures. Think about a balloon. When you blow air into a balloon, you are compressing the air inside it. In this case, the air you're blowing into the balloon is being compressed, and it's stored under pressure until you release it. As all coaches are the same, we will learn using a single coach as an example. The brake system is controlled by the driver, and inside the cab, there is a lever called the brake lever. When the driver applies the brake, the brake shoes come into contact with the disc, eventually bringing the train to a stop. Let's see how this process occurs. As the brake system operates using compressed air, there is a compressor located under the locomotive. This compressor is essential for maintaining the required air pressure to ensure the system's proper functioning. The compressed air is supplied to the end coach through pipe. The green pipe is known as the BP, brake pipe, while the white pipe is the FP, feed pipe. These pipes are joined using hose pipes and couplers. Here, we have a cut-off angle cock, which is used to isolate the air to prevent a drop in air pressure. This is typically used during the coupling and uncoupling of coaches. Furthermore, these two pipes are connected to a unit called the control panel, and then continue to the coach's end. From the control panel, two output pipes extend to each bogey, where they are connected to the brake cylinders via dump valve. In each bogey, there are four brake cylinders and four brake discs. Sometimes, you may encounter a bogey-mounted brake system, where the brake shoes come into contact with the wheel. In contrast, these coaches have an axle-mounted brake system, where the brake shoes make contact with a disc. This is why it is also referred to as a disc brake system. Let's see the operation. In this brake system, the brake pipe is charged to 5 kg per square centimeter, and the FP, feed pipe, is charged to 6 kg per square centimeter by the locomotive. When the brake is applied, the brake pipe pressure decreases within the system through the driver's brake valve. Then, the distributor valve in each coach reacts to supply the auxiliary reservoir air pressure at a proportionate level. Here, in this control panel you can see two tanks. One is 125 liter reservoir for brake system. 75 liter reservoir for toilet system. The output pressure from the relay valve leads to the bogey isolating cocks BC1 and BC2. When the cocks are opened, the air leaves the panel through ports and goes to the brake cylinder through dump valves. Here is the dump valves, and these pipes are connected with the brake cylinder. In this scenario, the air pressure increases inside the brake cylinder, causing the piston to move outwards. As the brake caliper is connected to the cylinder, it moves closer to the disc. And, finally, the brake shoes come into contact with the disc, gradually bringing the train to a stop. The BC air also leaves the panel through ports and goes to the double brake indicators. In this condition, the window of the brake indicator shows a red color. 
Hope you understand how the train brake system works, especially disc brake. Thank you. Let's grow up. Never stop learning.